Hi and welcome to Palma de Mallorca. Mallorca is the crown jewel of Spain's Balearic Islands and the most popular travel destination in the Mediterranean. The island is known for its beautiful coastline, limestone mountains, fantastic architecture, rich history and of course its stunning beaches. Especially its capital city, Palma de Mallorca is a must visit for anyone who loves art, culture and excellent food. In this Mallorca travel video, I will take you on a tour of my 20 favorite things to see in Palma de Mallorca. All but one are in walking distance, and my tour offers the most efficient way to explore them all. But feel free to also jump to the places you are most interested in. Let's get started. Plaza de España is the perfect starting point for a day in Palma. It's likely the place where you arrive from the airport, as the airport bus A1 stops here, and it's a good place to catch taxis. The plaza is a nice square surrounded by cafes, banks, bookshops, and fast food chains. Check out the monument of King James I, a Conqueror door. The statue shows Aragon and commemorates the liberation of Mallorca from the Moors in 1229. As a word of caution, the plaza can get quite busy at times. Beware of back snatchers. Just across from Plaza de España, you will find the main bus station of Palma, which is entirely underground. As a tip, you can find some lockers at the station in case you need to store your bags. But they're not very large, so make sure they fit your bags. Behind the station entrance, you can enter the Parque de Ses Estaciones, an expensive green park with lots of trees to provide shade and protect from the sun. You also find lots of benches and two large playgrounds for children. It's a good place to sit and relax a bit or have a picnic while doing some people watching. Right next to the Parc des Estaciones, you will find the quaint historical solar train station. The Trent Solar is a narrow gauge wooden train dating all the way back to 1912. From here, you can take the scenic ride through the island all the way to solar. You can purchase the tickets online or directly at the station with a helpful and friendly staff. As a tip, bring some snacks and water with you on the ride and don't forget your camera for some spectacular shots along the way. Let's head into the inner city to one of the main pedestrian streets of Palma, the Calle de San Miquel. Calle de San Miquel is a great place for shopping and sightseeing, as many cool fashion boutiques, courier shops and brand name outlets are located here. You will also find a few amazing churches and museums on the street, some of which I will cover later. Just a few meters off the Calle de San Miquel, you can find the Mercat del Olivar. Mercat del Olivar is a great local market with tons of fresh food options that are beautifully decorated and presented. It's where locals and tourists alike shop for top quality fresh produce. Dozens of stalls selling everything from cheese and charcuterie to fresh vegetables, herbs, spices, meats and seafood. The historical market is very clean and well organized and offers several options to have lunch as well.
check out the fish stalls that offer fresh tuna, lobster, oysters, and cuttlefish. On the upper floor, you'll find a small restaurant that can cook your fish for you for a small fee of six euros. A truly wholesome experience. Heading back to the Calle de San Miguel, let's check out the historical Basilica de San Miguel. It's one of the oldest churches in Palma, dating all the way back to 1229. Dedicated to the Archangel Michael, it was later remodeled in the Gothic style in the 14th century, and further extended and enlarged in the Baroque style in the 17th century. Check out the sanctuary dedicated to the patron Virgin of Palma, La Madre de Deo de la Salud. The Catholic Church was upgraded by the Pope to the status of a basilica just a few years ago, which is symbolized by the red and yellow umbrella to the right of the high altar. It's a quiet and serene place, and entrance is free. Let's continue our walk down the San Miguel Street. On the left, you will see the Museo Fondacio Juan Marc, a beautiful building with amazing paintings that offer an eclectic collection of art in two floors. This museum was a highlight of my Palma visit, and I recommend you check it out. Admission is free, and as a special tip, you can use the lockers and clean restrooms here as well. Plaza Mayor is the main square smack in the old city center of Palma. This rectangular plaza is framed by beautiful facades on all four sides and there's always something happening here. Check out the nice cafes and restaurants or have some delicious ice cream while admiring the architecture. During the day, you can often find a small market here with plenty of stalls to sell jewelry, handicrafts, souvenirs, snacks and veggies. If you want to take pictures without people in stalls, you have to come here before 9 o'clock. The plaza also looks beautiful in the evening, but more on that later. When you exit the Plaza Mayor, you will find one of my favorite modernist buildings in Palma. It was designed by the architect Louis Fortezaray in 1909 in the Art Nouveau modernist style. The richness of the decorative work with the colorful use of multicolored broken tile fragments that are laid out in an irregular fashion is outstanding. It reminds me a bit of Gaudí's amazing buildings in Barcelona. Have a look at my detailed Barcelona video for more details. Check out the grotesquely painted face flanked by winged dragons on the facade of the second floor. This was where a former dental cabinet was located. A very fitting advertising. Heading down the small streets and stairs to the lower town of Palma, my next stop is the Caixa Forum in Palma. Located in another breathtaking modernist building, designed by Luis Domenici Montaner, who also famously designed the Palau de la Musica Catalana in Barcelona, an absolute must-see building in Barcelona. The permanent exhibition of the Caixa Forum is fairly small, but nevertheless very interesting. 
The museum offers an eclectic set of exhibitions and I was able to catch one on the moon landing. Admissions is 6 euros if you're not a customer of the bank. Stroll along Carrer Unio, past Plaza del Marcat, and you will get to Pasaic del Born. Pasaic del Born might be the most classy street in Palma. It's a beautiful tree-lined boulevard with high-end retailers, shops, and terraces. They're lined by tall trees that offer lots of shade. Since cars are only allowed to drive on the outer part of the boulevard, the whole middle part is reserved for pedestrians. Sit at a cafe and watch live go by or do some window shopping here. The street becomes particularly beautiful during Christmas when all the lights go up. From Pasaic del Born, it's a short walk over to the most important highlights of any Palma visit, the Royal Palace. Back in the days of Arab rule, Mallorca was of immense strategic value, and this continued as the island sought its independence. The Royal Palace of La Almudaina, with the castle of Roman origin, is a modification of the Muslim Alcazar. After the Spanish took over in 1229, became a place for Spanish and Mallorcan monarchs to hold court. The Spanish monarchy uses the citadel for visits even to this day. The courtyard features a series of historic tapestries and the exhibition is definitely worth a visit. As an added bonus, the upper palace gardens and terraces offer some of the best views you'll find anywhere in Palma. The palace is open to visitors all year round and admission is 7 euros. No trip to Palma would be complete without a visit to its spectacular sandstone cathedral, La Seu. This impressive building took 400 years to build, and due to its size and placement on the old city walls, is almost impossible to miss. La Seu is not only one of the largest Gothic churches in Spain, the eastern main rosette is also considered to be the largest in the world, with a diameter of almost 11 meters. The more than 1200 pieces of colored glass are composed into patterns and floral ornaments and were created in the 14th century. Completed only in 1630, it became one of the tallest cathedrals in Europe with a ceiling height of 44 meters. The weight-bearing pillars are among the thinnest and are counterbalanced by massive flying buttresses. Some of the 20th century renovations were undertaken by the famous modernist architect Antoni Gaudi. For a few days each year, the cathedral's upper terraces and bell tower can be explored as part of an hour-long guided tour, which I highly recommend, as the views from the terraces are breathtaking. The only downside is the small flights of stairs that only allow for one-way traffic. To avoid long lines, buy your ticket online and select during which time window you want to visit. Entrance is 9 euros, for the tour you pay 25.
As you exit the cathedral through the back door, you are very close to our next destination, the Jardin del Bispe. This tiny garden is a great spot to relax and take pictures. It's a small oasis hidden between the old town walls, and the flowers and fish pond are definitely worth seeing. Entrance is free. Discovered only 100 years ago in the gardens of a manor house in the old town, the Arab baths date back to some time when Palma was an Arab city known as Medina Mayorga. Thought to have been attached to a private home rather than a public hammam, the Arab baths seem to have been constructed from the remains of other buildings from previous periods. The mainly Roman columns in the doomed roof tepidarium are all different and clearly salvaged from different places. The baths are a small but fascinating place to visit. For me, the highlight was the beautiful secluded garden with the many beautiful flowers. Entry is 3 euros. Let's leave the old town and head towards our next destination, the Marina of Mallorca. The modern marina offers several restaurants and cafes and boasts amazing views of the sailboats and superyachts. Further behind the marina, you can get a glimpse of the large cruise ships that anchor in Palma. Check this out. After a short walk along the harbour promenade, passing the famous Palma sign, I've arrived at Park de Safeshina. This park is another beautiful and relaxing place to escape the bustle of the city. It offers cafes, lots of shade and a playground for kids. It's another great place to take a rest or have a picnic. Right next to the park, you will get to the Es Baluard Museum. The Es Baluard is another musty art gallery in Mallorca. It features lots of amazing artworks and sculptures by some 500 modern and contemporary artists. I love the super modern architecture of the place and the terrace and the viewing platforms that allow us to take in the gorgeous vistas of the harbor. Entrance to the museum is 6 euros.
Okay, let's leave the city and head over to the beach to take in the sunset at Can Pastilla and Sarenal Beach. Playa Sarenal is a long sandy beach and most likely your hotel and recommendation will be in this area. The famous beach promenade features lots of bars, restaurants, souvenir shops, supermarkets and hotels. It's a place to see and to be seen. The beach is cleaned every day and offers crystal clear turquoise water. You find sections that are more for the party crowd, while others are more catering to families with children. I particularly love the relaxed atmosphere in the early evening here. Check this out. To round off our day in Palma, let's head back into the old town for some delicious Mallorcan dinner. Take a stroll through the small alleys and streets of Palma and don't miss to check out the Playa Mayor at night. It's simply beautiful. So here we go. I hope you enjoyed my tour through Palma de Mallorca and you got some inspiration for your next trip here. If you did, please give this video a like and let me know in the comments below any tips that you particularly liked or which I've missed. And also check out my other videos on Mallorca, Barcelona, and Spain for some of the most amazing places to visit. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Have a good one. Bye bye.